Cuando yo me crié, me criaba, no había luz aquí. La energía eléctrica llegó aquí cuando yo tenía, estaba como en sexto grado. Y si sobrevivíamos así, pues, ¿por qué no vamos a sobrevivir ahora? Esta puede ser agua de monte porque esto es vivo. Antonio Quintana lives in a small mountain town in the middle of Puerto Rico with his wife Carmen Rivera. She has glaucoma and late-stage Alzheimer's. Hurricane Maria hit Puerto Rico exactly three months ago, destroying 80% of the island's electric grid. It's been so long since Antonio's had electricity that he stopped waiting for it to come back. No one knows exactly how many people in Puerto Rico are living like Antonio and Carmen. But at least a third of the island is likely still in the dark. Este huracán no había sistema eléctrico en, en, a nivel mundial que se sostuviera ante el embate de un huracán donde hubo vientos registrados de más de 200 millas. But the blackout isn't just due to the storm. Human beings played a role here too. Back in the 1970s, Prepa, Puerto Rico's electric power company, built its most important plant in the south because that's where the oil industry was. The problem? Most people live in the north. Tenemos 75% de la producción aquí en el sur y sin embargo tenemos 70% de la demanda, ¿verdad? En el área metropolitana. Entonces dependemos de las líneas de transmisión. It's no secret that running crucial transmission lines through the mountains in the middle of Puerto Rico wasn't a great idea. But like all human plans gone wrong, it didn't seem like anything would go horribly wrong until it actually finally did. But the design of the grid wasn't the only problem. The failure to take care of it hurt too. Ha habido críticas que han sido justas. ¿Cuáles críticas han sido justas? Eh, el sistema, eh, pudimos haberle dado más mantenimiento, vamos a decirle así. Y digo pudimos, pues yo llevo 28 años en la empresa. An external audit conducted last year concluded that Prepa went years without investing in basic maintenance and the grid, quote, appears to be running on fumes. And that's only when Prepa can afford fumes. Since 2014, it's filed for bankruptcy, laid off about 25% of its staff, and routinely skipped basic upkeep. It's all made the grid more vulnerable to collapse, and it's made the task of getting the grid back online much harder. So when we first showed up at this line segment site, um, the area was completely vegetated. One day we had maybe 20, 25 guys out here for a whole day trying to free a track vehicle and do work. So I mean, that, that, that's an expensive day. Right, and not even working on the real with their, task at with hand. With the real job, correct. We could have done this work that has taken us over a week and probably one day back in the States with good access to the sites. And then there's another problem. There aren't tens of thousands of new 60-foot utility poles just lying around. I think the biggest challenge we face is the amount of material required. The Army Corps of Engineers has ordered more than 50,000 utility poles, but only received about 11,000 so far, because Texas, Florida, and California all need them too. But even if there were 50,000 poles available, they'd still have to be shipped to Puerto Rico and then distributed to the roughly 3,600 workers who were spread throughout the island. We're not just talking about a normal telephone pole that you would think of. We're actually towers that you would see along the highway. 
So if you can imagine one of those large towers actually lifting it by helicopter and transporting it on top of a mountaintop and then emplacing it and then flying crews in who actually are uh, hanging under helicopters to string line and all the pieces of that. In some cases, uh, some of the towers on these lines were all completely destroyed. Initially, the goal was to restore power to 95% of the island by mid-December. Now, the Army Corps of Engineers is targeting late February. And even then, they're just restoring the system to how it was before, because you can only spend FEMA money on repairs, not upgrades. On top of it all, after power has been restored, there's no guarantee it'll be reliable. Se nos va la luz casi todos los días. Eh, a veces por solo dos minutos o tres, pero a veces se nos va por cinco horas o por cuatro horas. Tamara Texidor, who lives in San Juan, is part of a large contingent of people on the island who only sort of have electricity back. ¿Cómo, cómo le ha afectado no saber si vas a tener luz en cualquier momento? Es como... Eh, El no, poder, el no poder planificar la nevera, el congelador está vacío y la nevera tiene muy, muy pocas cosas como para el diario, para el desayuno y, y se compra bien de poquito a poquito porque pues no sabemos. Tamara doesn't expect things to change anytime soon, but it's hard to complain. She and her family know they're the lucky ones. Lo mejor posible. 